Did you ever wonder why is it so hard to create a deep and fulfilling long-term relationship? Why is it so hard to live our autonomy and independence and also allowing a nurturing closeness and a really deep connection that, that nurtures us? Where we can truly feel seen and understood and safe in the connection. So today I want to talk with you about our need for autonomy and connection and also about the dilemma most of us went through in our childhood. The extent of the dilemma differs of course but still we all know this conflict to a certain extent in my opinion. So as a child our survival is entirely dependent on the attention of our parents or caregivers, right? As a child, we cannot simply go somewhere else and, and without this care of our caregivers, we would, we would die. However, many parents are not able to tolerate the full vitality and, and liveliness of their child and have only a, really often they only have a limited ability to create a fulfilling and, and valuing relationship. They might, they might not tolerate certain inner needs or movements or emotions of the child. For example, if the, if the child shows protest or anger or the need for demarcation and autonomy, or if the child shows the strong need for closeness and a nurturing connection. So this is perhaps because the, the parents have gone through bad experiences with certain inner movements as children themselves and therefore suppress those needs within themselves just as they are now suppressing them externally in their child. And all the needs, anger, despair or sadness that the parents have suppressed in themselves, they automatically suppress in their child as well in order to keep these movements and emotions out of their own consciousness, to not get in contact with their own trauma material. In essence, it is ultimately about two movements of the child in the direction of demarcation, on autonomy or, or independence, or in the direction of closeness and connection and feeling nurtured. And to these two directions, yeah, closely to related to these two directions are the core emotions of anger and sadness. Maybe for that I will I will do another video. But today I want to give you two examples or scenarios, let's say. Scenario one: uh, Imagine, for example, as soon as a child shows protest, the parents unconsciously sense the danger of coming in contact with their own trauma material. So they suppress these tendencies in their child. They fend the child off with certain emotions. Yeah, the child with certain emotions and needs, they fend it off. Maybe, maybe they, they ignore it or they even punish it or manipulate it. And this can happen, uh, this can happen very directly yeah, or also completely subtle. And it means that the child cannot live this part of him or herself and has no space in contact with the parents to express certain emotions or needs or boundaries. So the child has to suppress this form of self-expression in order to not lose the relationship with the parents. However, this places an extreme stress on the young child's body body system on the complete child because it does not because the child doesn't experience a loving environment and connection which is essential for yeah for its development and stability ultimately the consequences are similar um yeah similar processes as in shock trauma but over a longer period of time and and during the development phase of the nervous system and through these kind of experiences, the child basically becomes its traumatizing environment inside, internally. So the experience of stress and threats in contact with parents often lead, leads to, yeah, to a distorted development because certain aspects of connection get linked to stress or even danger in the child's nervous system. 
Nevertheless, these living impulses in the child have not simply disappeared, but they find their expression in a distorted way in order to deal with this dilemma somehow. Um, we have found, yeah, we all have, well, kind of, we all have found individual, let's say, emergency solutions for this dilemma that we usually, yeah, these solutions usually we maintain um, throughout our lives. But these emergency solutions are the cause of suffering today. There are many, many possible dis distorted ways to compensate these yeah, scenarios. And, and there are many possible compensation, compensation strategies, let's say, and side channels to, to deal with this old conflict that still seems to be true. It still feels to be true. That it feels to be true. That's why we can't, or we can't think our our way out of trauma. So I want to give you the second example today. The second example um, is if the child's movement towards the parents is frustrated again and again. So if parents have a problem with closeness or maybe vulnerability or with truly getting in contact with the child's needs, then they will suppress these tendencies of the child too. So here the desire of the child for closeness, for openness, for exchange, for vulnerability and connection doesn't get fulfilled and nurtured. And here too, it is the same as in the first example, the parents ward off in the child what they also ward off in themselves. They may walk away when the child seeks closeness or turn around or push it away and this is, of course, a disaster for the child. Both is a disaster. So the result is that the conflict described in both examples, both scenarios here, is not solvable for the child because the child needs the connection and also the autonomy and naturally wants to live and express, uh, express its full vitality and liveliness and all its needs and inner movements. But a young child cannot afford to question the behavior of his or her parents. Because realizing that the parents are not that loving and that there's actually no hope for a change would overwhelm the system. Because the physical survival of the child, of course, is, is dependent yeah, on, on the parents. So... Thank you very much for watching this video. Now I want to ask you, how do you feel about that topic? What did you experience? Which strategy did you choose as a child? And how are you dealing with your patterns today? Let me know in the comments. Or it's also possible to write me a private message. And I want to say I'm really curious to hear from you. And I also want to invite you Hop on a call with me to have a deeper look yeah, about what, what holds you back from a deep and nurturing connection to yourself and others. Thank you for watching and now I wish you an amazing day. Thanks.